If you were to look at the all-time leaders for walks among batters, you would see some pretty big names. Among the players in the top 10, we have seven members of the 500 Home Run Club, eight MVP winners, and nine Hall of Famers. But let's look at the player in 11th, Eddie Yost. A player who made just one All-Star team, and from what I can tell, never received a Hall of Fame vote. Let's talk about him and some of the other forgotten walk artists of yesteryear. My name is Bobby, and welcome back to another edition of Stat Stories. Eddie Yost was a third baseman who played from 1944 to 1962, primarily with the Washington Senators. He also played two seasons in Detroit and was part of the Angels in their first two years of existence. Aside from his one all-star selection in 1952, he didn't receive any accolades in his career, and we can see why from some of his career stats. Yost was a lifetime 252 hitter who did not reach the 2000 hit milestone. Out of all the players in the top 50 for most career walks, only Adam Dunn and Mark McGuire can say the same about their hit totals, but they were both big time home run hitters. Yost only had 139 long balls for his career, but that total could have been higher. Yost played home games at Griffith Stadium, which didn't have the most favorable dimensions for right-handed hitters. It was 405 feet down the left field line, while just 320 to right field. Here are Yost's home run totals from 1949 to 1953. And here is how many he hit at home. So it's reasonable to assume Yost could have been a consistent 20 home run player in his prime. In fact, he hit 21 homers in his first season in Detroit in 1959. Now, Yost wasn't all that great of a base runner or a fielder, so really most of his career value comes from his ability to draw walks, which earned him the nickname of the walking man. Yost led the American League in walks six times, and topped the 100 walk mark in a season eight times. Fangraphs put his wins above replacement at 37.0, and Baseball Reference has him at 34.1. Both are respectable marks, but it's difficult to find modern comparisons to him. Luckily, we at least have some historical comps. Enter Eddie Joost. Joost played in the bigs from 1936 to 1955, primarily as a shortstop. He was on the Reds team that won the 1940 World Series and later played on the Philadelphia Athletics. With the A's, he had six straight seasons of 100 walks, but never led the league in the category thanks to Ted Williams and Eddie Yost. Now the name Joost is of Dutch origin, and in that language would be pronounced Yost. The fact that two players with such similar names and skill sets played at the same time is ridiculous enough, but both players made the AL All-Star team in 1952. Sadly, they didn't get to play in the game as it was called off in the fifth inning due to rain. Otherwise, we could have seen the left side of the infield consisting of Joost and Yost, or Yost and Yost. Alright, moving on. With the Reds, Joost never hit more than six homers in a season, he struck out quite a bit for the time period but made up for it with good defense. With the Athletics, he drew tons of walks and hit close to 20 homers a season, and all this happening while he was in his early 30s. So what changed for him? Glasses. Joost had astigmatism and didn't wear glasses while playing because he didn't want to be looked down upon, but he started wearing them with the A's and he obviously benefited. Here's his slash line with the A's compared to Eddie Yost's career line. Pretty similar except for Joost's superior slugging. And in terms of career war, both are again similar. But there's one last person we need to bring up. Eddie Stanky played in the majors for 11 seasons and was known for his grit and determination as a 5'8 second baseman. The three-time All-Star is probably best known for playing with Jackie Robinson on the Dodgers in 1947, where he would bat leadoff with Robinson in the two-hole. He wasn't much of a power threat with just 29 career home runs, and 21 of those came at the polo grounds where the left field line was just 279 feet away. Like our previous Eddies, he was known for drawing walks. Stanky had six seasons of 100 plus walks, leading the National League in three of them. Stanky batted 268 for his career, which is higher than the players we've mentioned previously, but still not incredibly high. Though his 410 on base percentage is something few can claim to have. His defense was good and his career war total is the highest we've seen so far, which is notable since he didn't make his major league debut until age 27. Let's put this all in perspective. Here are the 11 seasons in which a player had 150 walks. 
and here are their home run totals so you can see the type of player that typically gets walked this much. Bonds, Ruth, McGuire, Williams, and Yost. If we expand this to 148 walks in a season, we see Juiced and Stanky as well. Now I could keep expanding this list and you'd come across guys like Max Bishop and Ferris Fain who also fit this player type, but I didn't cover them in this video because, well, their names aren't Eddie. But why does any of this matter? All the players I've brought up are reminiscent of a player type we don't see anymore. Players who lead the league in home runs are typically among the top power hitters, and that's especially true today. We just don't see guys who at 250 with no power top the walk leaderboard now. But players like Yost, Juiced, and Stanky at least showed us that there was a time where someone could be a valuable offensive player without being a great hitter. All it took was some plate discipline. So thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this look into forgotten walk artists, then please like and share and hit subscribe to help the channel grow. Comment below if there's a player or topic you want to see covered in a future video. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.